Caddis Maximus here. This time it's a offbeat video, but uh, this is a computer I've been using. Actually, I started my YouTube channel doing editing on the phone, uploading. It was entirely on my phone. So this is the computer I've had for maybe a couple years or something. It's an old HP 620 workstation. And uh, finding something where you can like edit videos and do that type of stuff and maybe do a little bit of gaming. This is probably not the best machine at least today but uh, a couple years ago there corporations about every five or six years just go through and uh, update all their machines and so a lot of these end up in a big burst on the market and get pretty cheap for a short while so I got in on that never was into the or always heard about the Sandy Bridge machine so that's what this is is a dual processor system anyway the upper CPU and you need a few tools to do this upgrade so it's kind of a helpful video if anybody uh, does get one of these old workstations and I'll show you but it the CPU the upper CPU gets pretty hot and you need quite a few tools Torx driver uh, Thermal based some picks because we got to swap the connector on the fan actually I may just unscrew and swap the fans that may be easier so Get all this stuff out of here Always kind of like these old workstation machines because of uh, they were just you know had better build quality. So you get an old workstation, you get a nice case. These things in like 2012 with this specification, this has dual uh, 26 E5 2690 V1s. That's 3.3 gigahertz uh, sustained all core. It was like a ten thousand dollar machine or something. So these are always kind of neat because you can see inside this machine here, totally filled up. Uh, that's a Zotac Titan Black. It's an old video card. I paid like 200 bucks two years ago for it, and the darn thing still goes for 150 or something on eBay. Uh, it's just crazy. Video cards are too expensive to upgrade. Wi-Fi 6 adapter and the Sound Blaster RG4, which also needs power. But the second CPU is on this Big Daughter card, and sometimes you have trouble with it where it just the connector needs to be sealed a couple times so you'll use the machine and it'll just reboot or give you a black screen with a QPI error so daughter card dual processor systems sometimes are funky but this lower CPU as you can see has a four heat pipe heat sink there's even a little heat sink on top of the heat pipes and then they're offset to make it all fit inside this system with a couple of fans a heat sink fan and then an exhaust fan. This machine actually has 10 fans in it. It's surprising. The Z640 is the more current model, which still uses an LGA 2011 socket, but they've gotten rid of this uh, RAM cooling uh, shroud, which also has a couple of fans in it because they got rid of the half of these memory slots, which I thought was kind of lame too. Anyway, this heat sink. Let's get a lot more zoom here. As you can see, is a three pipe heat sink over the top of the uh, copper plate. This is a four heat pipe, and the heat pipes are in direct contact. And since these are Sandy Bridge processors, they have soldered uh, uh, heat spreaders on top of the CPUs. Almost done here. We are done. Whoop. Let me unplug the. Yeah, and it may be easier just for me to swap the fans. I was using Arctic Silver. You can see how this, whoops, you can see how this wasn't that flat. It was all squished out there, but then there's a bunch of extra on the bottom. The This whole design just didn't really end up working well, and it just had three little heat pipes. Um, you can see where the fins here, gosh, if I can keep this in frame, are actually kind of cut out. And so we're going to be upgrading to, gosh, I am terrible about framing when I'm zoomed in because of this. Let me zoom out a little bit here. There we go. So there's the old one. The new one has a bigger block, thicker stack of heat sinks. We can see that they indeed are the same offset. This other right there, so that's how you know it'll work. And then the bolt pattern. 
if I can get it just lined up right, bolt pattern is also the same. So it's fortunate that they just used the same pattern than the Z640, except for they kind of modified the front end here. So you can at least upgrade this upper heat sink. Let me get this all cleaned up. I'm doing a uh, nine, uh, nine dot pattern right there. Seems to be about the best idea. Here we are with it all cinched down. You just want to go crossways and slowly get it synced down. I, if anybody who's done this before knows what I'm talking about, but it's just general mechanics. When you have a kind of plate, you want to try to evenly go down so it pulls it down in a parallel instead of rocking it back and forth. These screws, uh, you have to press down against the springs a little bit to actually get them to engage the thread, so that can make it a little bit of a hassle. And then you just screw them down. They actually have a little shelf like this. So as soon as you feel it stop there, you just give it just a little bit of torque. And then the springs themselves are what uh, provide the tension. The springs on this old heat sink are actually quite a bit larger than the ones on the new one. But I think the ones on the new one are probably just fine. And they may have actually done that to prevent because they may have been just a bit too strong on this one, causing it to want to bow. You can actually see it is a little bit bowed. Wow. Okay, so here's an example of why you don't use super huge springs on your heatsink. It's not only can you see it in the screen, this is a piece of feeler gauge. These edges are pretty darn straight. Look how bowed that is. I mean, that thing was a 30 second, but not 30 second, but I mean, that's a huge distance. That's 10 thousandths of an inch at least uh, or more. So the heat sink was only making contact around the edges. No wonder this processor was just running super hot. So not only, not only am I upgrading the heat sink to a four pipe, upgrading one that's significantly flatter and isn't going to warp. That's a, for how much the system was, that's pretty shameful. You can see that. Wow. That is no good. And here it all is back together. That this fan shroud works around the new heat sink. And now both heat sinks are one, not bowed, and two, it's now now they're both four pipes heat sinks. One last look, it's just amazing how crammed one of these workstations is when you have uh two CPUs, <laughs> twelve RAM slots, so forty eight gigs of RAM because it was super cheap because you could just put in a dozen four gigabyte sticks. 1600 megahertz and 800 watt power supply at least you can put in a decent graphics card all right let's see how much it actually reduced my temperature all right just a quick results been having it render the bmw test and blender all 16 cores as you can see two sockets just lock that 100 percent um and you can see our temperatures here 77 degrees on that top one and 73 peak on the bottom one uh, it's definitely been holding steady and it, this upper one used to hit 185 the fans would really ramp up unnecessarily because the CPU is getting so hot so this kind of loading and these are like 135 watt CPUs or something uh, there's our temperature and listen to this so I'm uh, more than satisfied with the results. At least my upper CPU isn't getting to near 200 degrees Fahrenheit or uh, whatever it is near 90, 95 degrees C. So 77, that's just fine with me. Anyway, this is just a little bonus video of a little project I was doing. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Caddis Maximus out.